From missions to cultural issues, this is Grace Talk, a ministry of Grace Baptist Church. Here's your host, Pastor Michael West. All right, welcome to Grace Talk. Uh, today joining us is Bill Haynes. Bill Haynes is senior pastor of Grace Baptist Church, former trustee of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, uh, former visiting professor of Baptist history and polity at the Reformed Theological Seminary. Bill has over 40 years of pastoral experience, and he's joining us today in studio uh, to talk about this special day. Uh, today is Reformation Day. And uh, as we think about... it's Halloween. It's Halloween, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So last night at our one of our meetings, you, you asked what was going on this week, and that was the response was it's Halloween. But it's it's more important than, than that. And so uh, today we just want to talk about Reformation Day, think through that. Uh, you think about tonight, uh, kids will be going out throughout our city and knocking on doors to get candy. You think about it, a little over 500 years ago, a man went and knocked on the Wittenberg church door with a mallet, and, uh, and that rang through uh, to all the world, even into our time today. And so would you just kind of maybe hit on what is Reformation Day, when it started, and some of those details? Well, Reformation Day, and it really did, it, was, it started an earthquake, both mm. culturally, spiritually, and ecclesiology-wise throughout the whole world. It mm. was amazing. Uh, Luther had uh, begun to discover some things that were important from the Scriptures. That is, if we looked at the church of that day and the church he was serving, the Roman Catholic Church, and looked at what the Word of God said, he said, these two do not match. They don't fit. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a total uh, disconnect. Mm -hmm. And so he began to study the Word. And, of course, he, uh, he was teaching Romans, lecturing through Romans. He'd been lecturing through the Psalms. And all of a sudden, it just struck on him, uh, Romans 1, 16, and mm -hmm. 17. And where Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation to all who believe, to Jew first and then to the Greek. Mm -hmm. And then he got to verse 17 and said, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous or the just shall live mm -hmm. by faith. And that hit him like a mallet in his head. <laughs> I mean, he said, wait a minute. We have been, the church is saying you've got to have, you've got to possess relics from mm -hmm. the, uh, the saints of old or even relics from the cross. You know, there were, mm -hmm more pieces of the cross around Europe in that day than would have made thousands of crosses, yeah. you know, there's so many. Uh, but the relics, they said you got to make pilgrimages to, uh, to uh, Rome in order to really be right with God. You've got to buy indulgences to help your relatives as well as yourself spring mm -hmm. from purgatory. And, and that was what really set him off was when uh, Tetzel began preaching. He was a, the great preacher of indulgences. Yeah. Yeah. He began to preach that and all of these other things just came together. It wasn't, it wasn't just the indulgences, but those mm -hmm. kind of were the, the firecracker that set it off, the major explosion. Yeah. And he said, that is just not biblical. The, the Catholic view in that day, and to some degree even today, is that we must make penance for our sins. Mm -hmm. And that was a false understanding of what repentance is. Mm -hmm. That's why when Luther started his 95 Theses, he nailed the Wittenberg church door, the first one was when Jesus said, when our master said, repent, he meant for repentance to be a part of all of life mm -hmm. and to be a lifetime endeavor. Penance was saying, I'm sorry, and I'll do this if you'll forgive me. Right. And buying or paying for it, doing a good work. Mm -hmm. And it really upset the church that now Luther was saying, wait a minute, we must live by faith, not by our works. Mm -hmm. And that started a, a, a thing that went across yeah. the world. Now, it didn't yeah. begin with Luther. You go back to John Wycliffe, mm -hmm. you go back to John Huss, and you find that back in those days, they were reformers as much as Luther was, mm -hmm. wanted to, uh, to see the church made something, uh, made different or made mm -hmm. better, if you will, made more mm -hmm. biblical. Yeah. As Luther, none of them were trying to start a new church. Yeah. They really wanted to see the church they were involved in mm -hmm. become a biblical expression of the mm -hmm. Christian faith. Yeah. Uh, Huss was killed 100 years before Luther came on the scene. But uh, he believed the same things Luther did about the truth of God's Word, the signif mm -hmm. significance and sufficiency of God's Word. Yeah, absolutely. And so on October 31st, 1517, uh, Luther nails the 95 Theses to the Wittenberg church door. You know, I want to think about just a little bit, you know, we tend to sometimes make Luther to be the, the main character of mm -hmm. the Reformation. It really wasn't. 
he wasn't really the main character in this. The, yeah. the main character in this whole story is the Word of God exactly. going forth. So can you speak a little bit to that of Luther's heart and sure. the Word? When he nailed those 95 theses to the, to the Wittenberg door, that was a way of, of starting debate. Mm. He, he wasn't trying to be a, a, people say, well, he was just a rabble rouser. Yeah. Well, he kind of got that reputation, especially later on in his ministry. Mm. But there he was just saying, hey, can we talk mm -hmm. about these things? These are things that we need to be discussing. Um, I've, I've got a cartoon on my office door back there of Luther nailing the 95 yeah. Theses, and it says, no, the door is fine. I'm fixing your theology. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's really yeah. what he wanted to do. He just wanted right. to do some correctives in mm -hmm. theology. Luther never intended for it to spread all across Germany. Mm -hmm. He never had the idea that, okay, this is going to take... But some, you know, the, the thing that was happening also at the same time that had great significance was the printing press was coming into mm -hmm. to be. Someone got his theses, had them mass produced yeah. for their day. Today we'd think it was a slow process, mm -hmm. but then and started spreading them all over the country. Mm -hmm. And so within a short amount of time, those theses had been developed and in people's thinking, in people's mind, and the Reformation began to grow. But mm -hmm. everything was pointing back to God's word. Mm -hmm. Everything was pointing back to, to the scriptures. Yeah. And uh, that's where they had departed from. They had mm -hmm. built a man-made system, both of ecclesiology and of, of Scripture. Mm -hmm. And they'd built their whole uh, canopy over mm -hmm. it, if you will, that was keeping the masses from seeing what the Word of God said. And Luther said, let's tear that away and yeah. let's let the people see what God's yeah. Word says. Yeah. And so he wanted to get the Word of God into their hands. Absolutely. And translate into the German, which Absolutely. is what, what he did accomplish in this. You know, after, when he was, after the Diet of Worms, yeah. And he was declared a heretic, mm -hmm. you know. He, he through a friend, was uh, had kind of a fake kidnapping, took him to Wartburg Castle mm -hmm. in Eisleben. And when he got to, uh, to Wartburg Castle, uh, he was there. there. There's a room. I've been in the room. It's yeah. kind of a neat thing to go yeah. in that room, see his desk, and, and very austere, very simple. But in that room, while he was in hiding under an assumed name, he... he uh, he translated the entire New Testament from Greek mm. into German. Now, that was the first time that had ever been done. Now, there were German New Testaments, but they had been translated out of the Latin, mm. which had been translated out of the Greek. And that's where the word penance came in. It was in the Latin, yeah. not in the Greek. Mm -hmm. And so Luther, in a very short period of time, translated the Greek New Testament out of, uh, of Greek into mm -hmm. the, uh, the German language, the common language of the man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's excellent, man. It's, it's exciting to see how that all came to be. And, and then what, the Gutenberg Press yeah. made it be able to yeah. mass produce to that out. Bible. Yeah. 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 yeah, excellent. Yeah, so uh, so those are some of the events that kind of led up to uh, Luther doing uh, nailing the ninety five theses to the church door. You know, maybe let's talk about how does what happened over five hundred years ago? How does it apply to us now in the twenty first century? What do you think on that? Well, one of the things that ought to make us realize and make us do is say, how are we? How are we conforming to Scripture, mm -hmm. both in our churches and in our personal lives? Mm -hmm. uh, the Reformation constantly calls me mm -hmm. to examine my life, and as I lead a church as senior pastor, mm -hmm. uh, how, do, how does how does the Reformation speak to what I need to be doing today? Mm -hmm. And looking at that, I. When I was in seminary, I, I studied the Reformation, but I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. Those yeah. were Lutherans. Yeah. Those yeah. were in Germany. Yeah. We're, in, we're in America. Right. Yeah. You know, we're Baptists. What yeah. does that have to do with us? Mm. But I came to realize l really later on, after about uh, 10 or 12 years out in the pastorate, that the things that took place in Germany now, 502 years ago, mm -hmm. those things have such a dramatic effect on how we ought to be looking at life. Yeah. Now, the Scripture is the primary but they point us to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And when you start talking about, you know, everybody immediately when they think about uh, the Reformation, they want to bring certain elements of doctrine into mm -hmm. it. So, oh, the predestination, right. election, all these things. Yeah. You know, those were part of things that came later. Mm -hmm. the, the real f emphasis of the Reformation is what does God's word say? Yeah. Now, those doctrines came out of that when they said, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> it's yeah. in the scripture. Right. It's there. God said that. Yeah. And so that all developed over that. But as far as the, the real focus of the Reformation that teaches us is go to the word, mm -hmm. back to the original sources, you know, yeah. uh, ad fontes, back to the original sources. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where we uh, find ourselves today needing to do yeah. because we've gotten so far afield mm -hmm. with 
Church has become entertainment-oriented. Church has become feel-good-oriented in so many places, yeah. so many times, that they need to go back to look. What does God say the church is to be? What does God say the Christian life is to be? Mm. And what does it mean, as Luther said out of the Scripture, when our Lord and Master said repent, he meant for it to be a way of yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lifetime of repentance. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, you know, another, another thing I think of when we think about, you know, how does it apply to us today, I just think of the boldness that Luther had mm. in the midst of that. Uh, one man standing up against the, the tide oh, yeah. of the church of that day yeah. uh, to say, no, it's not this way, and we need to talk about that. Yeah. I mean, so when we think about that in our context in the 21st century, you know, we, we have a lot of things coming at us today uh, that are challenging for us in the church and as believers. You know, what do we gain from just thinking about God raising up Luther and the boldness that he had I think we need that even well, today in our, our time, don't yeah, we? We do. The, the church in Luther's day was pretty much formed by the church culture, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. It was, a, in many ways, a bad church culture. Mm. But in our day, we're being formed by the external culture yeah. as a church. Mm. We're being called upon to accept things that God's Word says are not acceptable and to turn our back on things that mm. we ought to be speaking to. Yeah. And the, the culture challenges. And many churches are giving into that. Many groups are giving into that. Mm. And we have to come to a point of saying, we will be a Luther, if you will, yeah. in our culture. Yeah. We will stand for the truth. We mm. will stand for the truth of God's Word no matter what. Yeah. And there will be a, a price to pay. Mm -hmm. It won't be easy. You know, yeah. It will be, we'll be hated you yeah. know, in many ways. But one of the, my favorite uh, Luther quotes was, you know, uh, preach in such a way that people will either hate their sin or they'll hate you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that's really got to be yeah. the, the focus of where we are today. But so many are watering down any, any discussion of uh, mm. uh, depravity of man, uh, yeah. sinfulness of man, mm. uh, to just say, you know, I'm okay, you're okay. Yeah. We, we really have bought into a, uh, you know, moralistic therapeutic deism, mm -hmm. as Christian Smith said in his book, and, and it's just like, live good, be good, be nice, good people go to heaven, don't worry about it. Yeah. You know? yeah. and, the, and the scriptures are anathema mm. to or, or say that that is anathema. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So definitely we can take away from this just the centrality of the word. And that's what we need in our lives. Repentance uh, is something that goes on throughout the Christian life. It's not yeah. just a one-time event. It's, it's as we go through this life, we're constantly repenting. Exactly. Uh, and, and just thinking through just the boldness that Luther had, you know, that exactly. God would raise up a mighty army out there that would stand for truth and yeah. stand boldly on that. You know, maybe speak to Luther when he was presented before the council and his statement he said to them uh, when he was told to recant of everything <laughs> yeah. that he yeah, they laid his works out before him and said, uh, Dr. Luther, did you write these things? And he mm. said, yes, I wrote those. They're all mine. He said, <laughs> will, you, will you now recant mm. so that we won't punish you? We won't declare your heritage. <laughs> yeah. And basically he said, you know, I, 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 here I stand. Mm. I can do nothing else. Yeah. This is what my, uh, this is where I'm, I'm uh, this is what God's word says. Yeah, conscience and my is conscience is bound to <laughs> yeah. the word of God, yeah. not to the Pope, mm. not to the church. Yeah. My conscience is bound to the word of God. Mm. And that was not a popular thing yeah. uh, in, in Luther's day. That will not be a popular thing in our day. Mm. But for the ch church to have been changed, and ultimately, of course, the Protestant Reformation, it, the, it wasn't the reform in the church like he wanted yeah. it. It yeah. did go outside. Who knows? That may be the case today. It has mm. to be. But, but we pray for reform within the church. Mm. And, and that's not a matter of a, a few little doctrines here or there. It's a matter of a change, mm -hmm. a total character yeah. change of the church and of those who make up the yeah, church. total transformation. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you have some resources maybe you'd recommend yeah. to those who are listening to this that maybe yeah. they want to know a little more about the Reformation, who Martin Luther was? And... Yeah, there's several things here. One, uh, you know, this book right here, Here I Stand mm -hmm. by uh, Bainton, yeah. that is the standard biography. Mm. It, it's not the most exciting one to read, but it's, yeah. got, it's very good to read. I yeah. enjoy it. I really like this one uh, by uh, Stephen Nichols, The Reformation, you know, How a Monk and a Mallet Changed the World. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a very popular reading yeah. book. It's not long. It's mm. not heavy. I like that. Um, or Carl Truman's book on Luther and the Christian yeah, Life. That's a good one. It is yeah. very good. This whole series on different mm -hmm. theologians, but Luther is especially yeah. good there. And then these other two are actually... Baptist publications, you know, celebrating the legacy of the Reformation 
uh, which is uh, by uh, uh, some of our men, uh, Ke uh, Kevin King and Edward Henson, Benjamin Forrest. Mm. Uh, it really covers the, the concepts of the Reformation well and, and leads us to celebrate that. Yeah. And then finally, Reformation 500, Ray Van Est and Michael Garrett uh, wrote this. And it uh, uh, has contrib uh, uh, contributors from every walk of life. One of my mm. favorites, Timothy George, contributed yeah. to this. Timothy's a, a Reformation scholar. Mm and uh, from Birmingham, Alabama. And he just uh, uh, has a great piece in there about Luther and the Reformation. Good, good deal. Those are good resources. Yeah. And One thing we ought to say yeah. about Luther though before yeah. this. Yeah. Luther, people thought he had gone insane. Yeah. You know. <laughs> they thought he was crazy. They thought he was crazy. <laughs> yeah. because, but he, he, he was crazy for the Word. Yeah. He was crazy for mm. the glory of God. Mm. He was cra you know, he, he was so captivated by that that what people thought didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, I'm going to be true to the Word. Mm. We need that today. We do. We desperately need that Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Amen. We do. Yes. Well, Bill, thanks for joining us today as we talk about uh, Reformation Day. And hopefully we've gave them some good thought to, to think about. And Luther uh, thinks so. Yeah, Luther agrees with us. It was good. <laughs> yeah, good discussion. And uh, we're thankful for you, brother, and your ministry here at Grace. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed today's broadcast of uh, on Reformation Day. Uh, look, stay tuned for next month as we uh, begin diving into cultural issues with Pastor Todd Meadows.